Welcome again to another Curator's Chat. I'm Jason French, Curator of Collections at the Beringer Crawford Museum. Today we are at the workshop of Russ Childers. Russ is a noted local Appalachian musician and folk artist. Uh, we're here with Joe Andrews, and Joe uh, has been working with us and doing a lot on Appalachian folk arts. You've seen a number of his videos before. Today we're going to be talking with uh, Russ about uh, limberjacks and how they're made and how they fit within the Appalachian folk tradition. Uh, well, I got interested in uh, the uh, the limberjacks uh, because of my wife. She uh, she and I are, are musical partners. We'll go out and we play shows for schools and colleges and old folks' homes. And and when I play the banjo, uh, it's always fun to. Uh, demonstrate and, and show kids new things so we decided that we would start making uh, these dancing toys or dancing dolls limberjacks and uh, basically uh, what I thought I would show uh, Joe today is uh, how I go about creating these things and basically I just take a, a, a piece of pine board and then I draw up a silhouette of, of what it is that I'm, uh, I'm going to make um, and then I, I've got power tools over here my, my band saw and stuff and I, I will saw out the shape and then once I get the shapes sawed out uh, then I then I paint them up this is uh, this is what it all started she my wife wanted a goat so I started making goats um, and then uh, I forget what this I think this is a bear I'm, I'm not sure that I think I think that was the bear one and then this is the rabbit one I've I stopped working on these uh, when COVID hit because I didn't have any way to um, go about selling them but uh, once I get the profile cut out then what I do is I drill a hole in the back uh, of the animal, the doll, whatever, and I stick the this in here, and then when I put the legs on it, uh, it will it will dance. Let's see. Let's get one of these. This one. So this is what they look like when uh, when they're done. That was one of the things that I really wanted to discuss with you is how limberjacks kind of incorporated themselves into Appalachian musical tradition. Well, the way that I understand it is uh, back in in the the Appalachian Mountains. That's that's where my my parents were from, Eastern Kentucky, and uh, they. Uh, they didn't have a lot of money, and money that they did have, they they used it for housing, and they used it for food, and toys were just unheard of. So uh, the parents and the grandparents would uh, whittle these toys um, out of pieces of wood. Now, when I said I build mine, I build mine with power tools, but back um, you know, a hundred years ago, they would just take uh, their their knives and 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 the the old men and women they'd just sit around and while they were talking like we're doing here, they'd have a knife and they'd be whittling while they were talking, and they would fashion all of these these limberjacks uh, from just whittling, and uh, that's that's how I believe they were created, and. I, I think of a limberjack sort of as a babysitter. If you can imagine, if you can imagine a uh, a barn dance or a square dance where uh, um, the community gets together on a, a Saturday night after a whole week of working on your farm and not seeing anybody, uh, the musicians would gather and uh, uh, the the dancers would gather and they would 
they would be out in the, the center of the barn where there's enough room to dance. And so the kids, uh, to get them from underfoot, they would give them these toys and they would stick the kids off in the corner where they, they couldn't possibly dance or get in the dancer's way. Uh, so uh, that's what happened to the kids and the limberjacks. And one, uh, one thing that's really cool about the limberjacks is they're like miniature percussion instruments. Uh, they're like little drums. They, be, and they become a part of the musical accompaniment. Exactly. They, yeah. they, they, I don't know if it was intended, but, but uh, it worked out that way that, that all of a sudden you've got this little drum, this drum thing, this beat thing happening with the musicians. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And I think, I think that's probably a pretty fair um, idea of how how the limberjacks were incorporated into the Appalachian uh, life and you know culture. Okay. So how do your limberjacks differ from traditional limberjacks? How do they differ? Well, it's instead of having all of these precise cuts. You know, if you had a pocket knife and you were whittling, I mean, it just it just wouldn't be as uh, um, as smooth, and uh, you'd have whittle marks. And and actually, I think you know, with a pocket knife, you probably could get a little bit more creative with your sculpting of the the piece of wood. Um, but uh, I don't think people nowadays are really. Uh, I don't think there's really a whole lot of need for that for for what I do uh, as if I if I were a uh, a, a folk artist and uh, really focused on creating a piece of artwork this is more of a functional thing than a than a piece of artwork uh, a pocket knife and, and you would whittle it down and get it uh, a little bit more precise and and you you do a lot of animal limberjacks too, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. um, were were they traditionally animals or were they no? Traditionally, or? traditionally they were uh, more um, men and women, um, mostly men. Um, the older the older style um, when when they were made they were made with joints like this. Can you see that? How that how that's working it's it's a it's a total wooden thing but uh, for pr productivity and to get me going in a lot quicker I I use these little eye hooks and they for the most part they they're about the same but but these were the the traditional way that the the limberjacks uh, were made kind of hinged, kind of hinged, and, it, hinged and it's all yeah. it's all wooden. Whereas uh, this has got those mechanical fasteners, uh, which you know, for my purposes, it works a lot better. Well, I think it would probably give it a little different ease of movement, and some rhythm, and some interesting movement that you don't always get with the hinge. Yeah, um, well, it's 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 definitely there's a different clacking sound. Yeah. Well, one of the more fascinating things that, I, that I've noticed with Appalachian folk art is a, a lot of times it, it's just the expression of, of it's, it becomes an expression of where you're from or, or expression of home. And, and, and one of the pieces that I really enjoy that is really <laughs> an expression of where we're at, where we're from, would be this little one right here. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> this is... This is Fiona, yeah, and I love her. She, uh, she's just the cutest thing. We, we, uh, we started making it, uh, uh, and and what I especially like is when I'm in schools with kids. Get a close up of her teeth there. You can see how white her teeth are. I tell the kids when I'm when I'm dancing Fiona that they need to brush their teeth so they would look as nice as Fiona's do. You can see how pretty her teeth are. This is my hound dog. Um, we call him Sooner. I have a story about Sooner the dog, and so I. Uh, it's always nice to have you know Sooner there so the kids get to. 
get to to see sooner dance very much a very much a reflection of your story and kind of your upbringing and, and the story that you're wanting to tell other people mm -hmm. so that's one thing that uh, just fascinating to me uh, especially with these and then, and then you throw in the musical accompaniment and all that and it's just they're just a great piece of folk art i think so well, and it's, it's always interesting to me within the Appalachian folk art community how inventive people are, mm -hmm. how, how creative and inventive and the uh, ingenious ingenuity of it all. Um, within, you know, there's the traditional uh, joints or, or whatever with limberjacks, but then, Rush, you found a, uh, another way to do it mm -hmm. that works just as good. Um, but it's, it just fits your aesthetic and the, and the needs that you, what you need a limberjack to do, uh -huh, exactly. it fits it better and it is less than if you were setting and carving every joint by hand, um, it just works better for your, your limberjacks. And that's, that's what I love about Appalachian people and Appalachian folk arts myself. It's just seeing how inventive people are and how they can create and express themselves in different ways that is that is both um, uniquely Appalachian and then also just brilliant in so many ways. Yeah. We, we are in Batavia, Ohio. Yeah. And uh, what I what I always like to say is, you know, here in Batavia, Ohio is Claremont County, so that puts us in Appalachia. According to uh, these these Appalachian maps, we're, we're Claremont in, County is is an Appalachian county. Appalachia proper, right? And here. I'm not sure we have any mountains, but we are Appalachia. So. <laughs> well, thank you again very much. Well, thank, thank you, you so guys great. for coming out, and uh, I really really appreciate your interest in in what I do. I hope you've enjoyed this curator's chat. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on our next curator's chat.